Hello and welcome to this introductory video on the All Hell Let Loose WW2 War Games rules uh, intended for 6mm written by David Vosilevsky. My name is Charles Rowntree and I was one of the principal playtesters for this rule set and I'll be taking you through a turn or two of a game um, set in Arnhem in 1944 um, that I've taken to a number of UK wargaming shows um, prior to um, the COVID descending, um, which is intended to uh, allow players to have a very quick run through of the All Hell Let Loose rules. And today, what I intend to do is take you through some of the key mechanisms uh, that underpin the game and just give you a taster of um, the fun, the excitement, uh, the mayhem that can result once you start playing this game. So for the history books, um, this is set on Monday the 18th of September 1944. Uh, Colonel Frost and his um, um, battalion, reinforced battalion of British paratroopers Part of Operation Market Garden have landed in Arnhem and yesterday evening they were able to capture uh, the north end of the of the main bridge their principal objective. They're now holding it hoping for reinforcements that ultimately never arrive from the remainder of the parachute division that dropped and also from British 30 Corps, which is currently fighting its way um, through southern and south southwestern Holland. Um, and early on uh, the morning of, of that fateful Monday, uh, a German reconnaissance battalion, the only mechanised troops that the uh, German forces had available, um, made a disastrous charge across the bridge and straight into the face of um, British dug in British paratroopers armed with peats, anti tank guns, grenades, and um, I think anybody that has seen the Richard Attenborough movie um, A Bridge Too Far will will know pretty much what happens next, and the, the Germans are essentially. Um, destroyed in fairly short order and so what I'm going to do today is just take you through um, probably a couple of turns of that particular battle just so um, we can kind of show three key mechanisms um, the first one is um, the movement and activation um, system which I'll, I'll explain in a bit um, followed by direct fire uh, and I'll cover a little bit around indirect fire, but essentially it's the same mechanism. Um, there's just some slight variance in the results. And then um, the assault, hand-to-hand um, -hand or very close quarters uh, combat. And with a little bit of luck, we should see all three elements of that um, in fairly short order. So I built uh, a scale model of Arnhem, um, one, one to 1000 scale, although I am using um, the 6mm figures, um, I believe Adler and GHQ uh, figures uh, to represent uh, the armies. And within the All Hell Let Loose rules, each um, vehicle represents anything from one to five vehicles and a stand of infantry can, with four or five figures on, can represent um, four to five uh, infantrymen, a section, uh, a platoon. Uh, in this particular scenario, um, the, the vehicles are going to represent about two to three uh, historic vehicles. I believe there were about 23 vehicles that made this particular charge. Uh, and the um, guns are representing um, two of the British anti-tank guns and the um, infantry represent a, uh, a full platoon uh, of soldiers. So 
So <clears throat> the game uh, here, um, again, it's a demonstration game. It's intended for public participation. Um, so I, I am kind of um, um, changing the way some of the rules work, but uh, essentially the game always begins um, with the Germans having um, a, a very successful activation and essentially the Germans get a double move. Um, this particular point, uh, the Germans have completed the first of their activations and they have moved um, all the way across the bridge and are not now charging um, down the ramp um, into the teeth of um, British paratroopers' response. Now, the paratroopers knew that something was coming over that bridge. They could hear the engines. Um, they've been dug in for a couple of days. And so um, they were absolutely ready um, to um, fire. So we have a mechanism within this rule set um, where troops can be placed into ambush. So here, um, the following British troops on this side of um, the bridge form one formation and are in ambush awaiting uh, an attack. And then there are five more units on the other side representing another British formation again in ambush. Uh, you can see across the table that there are more British units um, that are spread out across the, uh, the board. Uh, again, these were defending the perimeter, and you can see uh, that I've placed a number of um, markers to indicate um, potential German positions. So, as far as this particular game is concerned, we're only really interested in the activities of this small number of uh, figures here, representing elements of two British units and one German unit. Uh, the game is really designed around formations. Um, it's absolutely the core um, system. The, um, the troop quality is determined at a formation level. Um, the ability to act, uh, move, um, the zones of control are all managed at um, a formation level. And in this particular case, um, the HQ for the German unit is actually Victor Grabner uh, in a captured British Humber. Um, and so that is the German uh, HQ unit. Uh, the British HQ units um, were, were not bothered about on this, but um, uh, just say that there are two British formations on this table. So the Germans have charged right across the bridge, but the British were expecting them and the British units have all been placed into ambush. As a consequence of that, at this particular point here, uh, Frost issues the orders and um, both British units are going to trigger their ambush fire. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just kind of take you through how that works a little bit um, and um, through the, the, the actual mechanisms. I'm not going to show any dice rolling, I'm just going to kind of call it out. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward um, system. Um, basically there is a roll with direct fire to hit the target. If the target is hit, there is a subsequent roll uh, to attempt to destroy. There's some variations if you're um, soft vehicles and obviously the individual guns and individual targets have different uh, attack um, modifiers and different defense modifiers, but it's fairly straightforward and hopefully I'll be able to take it through quite quickly. Um, the way the game works is you always hit on a modified score of four or more. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is, first things first, I'm going to fire my anti-tank gun. This particular anti-tank gun was remarkably successful in this battle. Um, it destroyed something like seven or eight of the German vehicles. Um, 
the um, sergeant uh, commanding the gun had blown a hole through uh, the concrete parapet on the side of the bridge and was able to track aerials and the tops of vehicles as they drove along the road and then just fired through his kind of prepared point. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is attack the um, front vehicle. Now ranges um, for direct fire are generally um, um, always uh, divided up into thirds. Um, the anti-tank gun has uh, a, a large range um, in this particular um, version uh, and it's just not going to be relevant, it's just going to be short range. Um, I'm not going to go into kind of the details but um, suffice to say that firing at short range gets a bonus, firing at long range gets a penalty and firing at medium range has no modifiers at all. So again I require a 4, 5 uh, or 6 modified, I get a plus 1 um, because I'm at short range. Uh, so if I roll a 3 or higher I've hit and I get a 3. So I have hit um, the front armoured vehicle. Oh, I rolled a 6. Um, indicating I've got a hit. I'm sorry there, I've, I've miscalculated. The anti-tank gun has an AV factor of 5 um, and I have to beat uh, the defence value of 8 with my dice roll. So um, a 6 and a 5 is an 11 and so that, that Puma has been destroyed. Okay, I'm just going to mark that. Um, you can take uh, the vehicles off, but um, particularly in this one, uh, I kind of like everybody to see the carnage uh, that the British are capable of causing uh, at this stage in the battle. All right, so that's my anti-tank gun from this side. What I'm going to do now, I think, is I will fire my infantry at um, that Hanomag. Now, infantry, um, they're armed with um, a Piet. Uh, in this particular game, um, the Piet um, has, has a, a, a range of three inches, um, so he's in range. However, um, there's no um, range modifiers. It's such a short range weapon that essentially it is, is considered a um, a single range so there's no benefit for being, being close and there's no um, penalty for being at the edge of that three inch range. Okay so I'm going to fire at the Hanamag but as soon as I start opening up then the German troops inside uh, that APC start leaping over the side. Normally um, troops within um, a truck or enclosed vehicle require half a move to dismount. However, uh, because this is an open-topped vehicle, there's a special rule for vehicles that are considered open-topped and the infantry can um, exit uh, or uh, re-enter the vehicle essentially uh, for free. So as soon as the lead elements of this British paratroop platoon open up with the machine guns and everything else, then the, the Hanamag stops uh, and the troops get out. <coughs> so uh, again, I'm now rolling to hit. Uh, I need a modifier of four. Uh, sorry, modif uh, modified result of four, five or six. There are no positive modifiers to this roll, so... Let me see what happens. I get a five. Um, so the vehicle has been hit. It is an armoured vehicle, uh, but it's um, only got uh, a defence of uh, six. Um, so I require, um, with my uh, anti-vehicle from the Piet of plus four, um, I require a two or higher to destroy the Hanamag. And I get a four, 
So the hammer mag has been destroyed. The infantry, because they've debussed, are not affected by that fire and will be able to uh, act uh, in a moment. So I've now completed the firing for my first two units. I'm now going to move on uh, to this unit here and they're going to fire at uh, this vehicle here. Uh, again, it's just the tractor. Uh, and again, it's carrying infantry, uh, but it's considered open top, and so the infantry will debus automatically um, whilst they're being targeted. Um, so again, I'm firing Piat. Um, it's got a short range. I don't get any bonuses, so I will hit on a four, five, or six. There's no modifiers to the dice, and I get a six. Now, because this is a soft vehicle, uh, once it's been hit, it is automatically destroyed. As you can see, the Germans are not exactly having an exciting time of it. Now move on to these two British paratroop um, um, units. And so um, they are able and will fire their um, small arms at the infantry that dismounted. Again, small arms fire with uh, anti-infantry works exactly the same way. So I'm rolling, requiring a four, five or a six. Uh, they're at short range, so a three or higher is a hit. Unfortunately, I roll a two and so miss. And then the other unit, again, will open up on that infantry. Um, but I roll a one. And so that German unit gets to live a little bit longer. So I've completed now the ambush fire from the British formation on this side of the bridge. I'm now going to begin uh, firing. Uh, ambush fire for the British formation on the other side of the bridge. So again, I will start here with uh, the anti-tank gun and I will target um, the uh, small car. Um, again, requiring a modified score of four to hit, it's at short range, so three, four, five or six. I get a three, so that's a hit. And again, because it is a soft vehicle, it's automatically destroyed. I'm just going to remove it uh, because I don't think there'll be too much left uh, after an anti-tank gun uh, fired at, at that particular unit. Okay, um, let's move on to <coughs> uh, this unit here at the back. And I think they will uh, initiate a small arms exchange with the infantry. So they're hitting, uh, again, require a four or more to hit, and they're at short range, so requiring a three or more. Uh, a six is a hit. Uh, now the infantry, um, this is an SS reconnaissance battalion. Um, they're veteran troops, uh, so they have a defense of six. Um, the troops fighting them, British paratroopers, again veterans, um, but um, there's there's no real fire modifier bonus for that. We work um, a slightly subtly different mechanism that gives veteran troops a better firing capability than um, um, regular troops or poor quality troops, uh, and you'll kind of see that as we as we go through the activation mechanism. So I require a natural six on um, the roll to kill to see if I kill that German unit. And I get a three. However, because I've hit that infantry unit, even though I haven't killed it, I have given it um, some disorder. You know, I might have picked off 
two or three soldiers might have wounded or killed an NCO or lieutenant. And so the fighting capability of that unit is, is degraded. Uh, and so even though they're not taken out of the battle, uh, they have picked up um, a, a disorder which will prevent them from firing until they recover and it degrades their ability in combat. And again, you'll see a little bit more about that as we kind of move through. I'm now going to move on to this unit over here. Um, again, they're going to fire piets and they're going to target um, um, one of the German armoured vehicles. No range modifier for the piet, so it's a straight dice roll requiring four, five or six. I get three, so that piet has gone wild. Okay, we now move to um, the units defending the road. So the lead um, platoon here will open up on the infantry. Uh, again, small arms and at short range, so requiring a three or higher in order to make that modified four. And we get a six, so that is a hit. And again, we will roll to see uh, if it's a kill. And we get a six again. So the German infantry are destroyed. Again, I'll remove them off the table. Um, now, unfortunately for the British, this kind of leaves um, the troops at the back here, this unit, uh, somewhat stymied um, because they're out of peer range and haven't really got a target that they can see that's infantry, the line of sight being blocked by the vehicles. So the infantry at the, the back there are unable to fire. So that concludes the British ambush fire in the middle of the German turn. So essentially this is an interrupt that troops under ambush are able to, to make um, during an opponent's go. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take off the destroyed vehicle so the uh, board is a little bit less cluttered uh, and we can see what's happening a little bit more clearly. And then the Germans will get their second go. Okay. So the Germans have got a move of um, in excess of six inches for pretty much everything. Um, and again, I think what I'm going to do is pretty much straight off the bat is I'm going to deploy uh, the final two platoons of infantry. All right, throwing them around. I apologize, Rolly. Okay. Now, at this point, um, the Germans clearly have triggered an ambush. It's actually more substantial than they were anticipating. Um, my understanding is, is that when Grabner and the uh, SS troops charged over the bridge, they thought they were maybe facing 120 British powers. Uh, and in reality, uh, Colonel Frost had command of about 750 at the bridge uh, on this particular morning. Obviously, many of them were... Uh, not actually able to take part in this particular fight as they were um, guarding the perimeter and pushing back German probes uh, and reconnaissances elsewhere around the ring. And, um, that, that's why you can see lots more British troops on but they, they don't actually take any more part in the action here. Um, but now the Germans are here, um, they're, they're ambushed, they've been triggered, it, they're suffering, well, they've really only got one acceptable choice, and that's push on. So pretty much the only way the Germans are going to get out of this situation is if they charge all the way down this road 
and fundamentally as far as this game is concerned if they reach this point here then they have uh, successfully uh, crossed um, uh, the bridge. Um, the British objective is obviously to stop that from happening and so what I'm going to do now with the Germans is essentially fling them uh, at the paratroopers. I don't have any choice. If I stay where I am, I'm just going to get shot up and um, I'm definitely going to lose. So I have um, the ability to move my infantry through uh, these other formations. I have a um, six inch move and I'm going to declare assaults. I'm going to declare an assault on this unit here and I'm going to declare an assault on that unit there. I'm going to move my two infantry from the back. They debust for free out of the APCs because they're open top. Um, I am going to support, even though it's disordered, it can still assist in combat in, in an assault. Um, and I am going to bring up um, one of my uh, armoured vehicles. Well, no, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up one of my APCs and I'm going to support, uh, support it in combat. And I think the rest will open fire. So <clears throat> when we actually take a move and... Again, I'll take you through in a moment kind of how activation works. You're issuing orders to individual units. So in this case, what I've done is issued assault instructions to these four. These two here are assaulting that one. These two here are assaulting that para unit. The remaining three German units, I am going to instruct to open fire. Now, there are a number of different orders that can, can be issued, but fundamentally the important ones are fire, assault, move, and we'll come to rally, uh, ambush, and a couple of others uh, later. But this is, this is uh, just a very simple run through, so I'm just going to concentrate on that. So now, <clears throat> again, as I'm the German player, it's my turn. I get to choose the order in which uh, actions and activity happen. So what I'm going to do is I am going to open it up with my um, vehicles in an attempt to um, disrupt uh, the British infantry that's dug in uh, in order to prepare the ground for the assault. So I'm firing these two vehicles, so we'll have one shot at that unit and we'll have one shot at that unit. Um, that's it, I've essentially got one shot on each. Um, I get a plus one modifier um, because I'm at short range with, with those main weapons. However, the British are dug in, so uh, I get a minus one penalty um, and again, uh, because the German vehicles have moved so far in this turn, um, they get another penalty because they're, they're firing after having moved. Um, so actually I'm at minus one on my shooting, so that requires me to roll a five or a six to see whether I hit. So first shot on the right hand side, I get a six. A shot on the left hand side, I get a four. So on the right hand side, I have hit the British Paris. Um, I am now going to roll to see if I destroy. I have an anti-infantry factor of plus one, uh, but the defenders are dug in, so that cancels out, and they've got a defense of uh, six. So if I roll a natural six, I will kill them, but otherwise uh, they will be disordered. So it's a three and uh, we get a disorder result. So again, incoming fire has um, wounded 
uh, one of the some of the, the, the British paratroopers. Uh, they've either had to keep their heads down, they might have lost again at NCOs. It doesn't necessarily reflect that maybe it's total casualties or total kills. What it just indicates is, is some loss of combat capability. And then before we go in, I will have a final shot. So I will use uh, the machine guns from the APC and I'll target um, this unit here. Um, again, plus one for close range, minus one because um, the paras are in buildings and cover, and minus one because I've moved, requiring a five or a six to hit. And I get a five. German um, activity is going really well today. And then um, the machine guns have an anti infantry of plus one, but the paras are in buildings, so that cancels each other out. The paras, paras defense is six, so on a natural roll of six, they're destroyed. And I get a six. Okay, so the British are taking some casualties on the way through. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, initiate uh, and actually conduct the assaults. This is the second of the core uh, combat mechanisms within the rules. And essentially, um, this is very much um, um, uh, a simplified uh, approach to this, but, um, but really kind of shows how vicious combat could be, uh, particularly hand-to-hand. -hand. Uh, it usually doesn't work out well for anybody involved. Now, in order to make um, the, the close combats uh, tougher um, for attackers and easier for defenders, we have uh, a sequencing mechanism. So the important thing um, is really getting that sequencing right. Essentially, an undisordered unit, such as this one here, um, gets to fight first and apply what Ever result um, to the attacker before the attacker gets to respond. However, a disordered defender goes simultaneously with the attacker. So, as the Germans, I choose um, the order in which my combats go. So, I am going to choose to start over here where I have the advantage or at least less of a disadvantage than I do on the other side of the road. So um, this is a simultaneous dice roll. We apply a number of modifiers and the objective is to get as high a total as possible. Uh, a modified total of six or higher results in the elimination of an enemy stand. Because uh, the Germans have two units involved in this particular combat. The Germans will roll two dice and we apply both results, whereas the British will roll one dice. And again, that's kind of how we allow or how we manage um, the uh, effect of weight of numbers. So as far as this particular battle goes, um, the British, we will roll first, they get a plus two uh, advantage and uh, another plus one because they're in defend infantry defending cover so they're on plus three to the roll. Uh, so they rolled a three so that gives them a six so one of those German units has been eliminated however because the British are disordered the Germans get to respond simultaneously. Uh, now the German infantry are attacking at plus two because they are veterans. Um, the APC is attacking at plus two because it's veteran as well, but it's attacking it's uh, attacking infantry in cover and so it gets a minus on the roll and so uh, it's only at plus one. So the infantry at plus two get a five so that becomes a seven and the APC gets a one, which becomes a three. Well, it doesn't really matter what the APC got. <coughs> the 
British have been eliminated. Uh, as the British player will choose to eliminate the infantry. Uh, the Germans won the combat and so are able to move and take the ground. Okay, on the other side, um, the British will go first. So again, British veteran infantry in cover are at plus three on the dice roll and a six to kill. Unfortunately, they've rolled a two, which means they get a result of five. And a result of four or five results in uh, the opposing player accumulating two disorder. <laughs> Okay, um, veteran troops can uh, sustain more disorder than um, poorer quality troops. Um, so at this stage, uh, that's that's not a uh, going to be an issue really for the Germans in terms of whether they get completely degraded. Um, once you accumulate um, five disorder, uh, a veteran unit is taken off the board. Um, but that's not going to happen just yet. However, um, that um, result applies a minus two to um, the combat factor of that uh, attacking German infantry. So um, both infantry units, uh, German infantry units are now going to get to respond uh, the front unit with two disorder is attacking at plus two because it's veteran, but minus two because of the disorder, and so is on a straight dice roll. Again, six still kills. Uh, so we get a four, which means that the British uh, accumulate two disorder. Um, and then the rear uh, German is at plus two because it's veteran, but minus one because of the single disorder. Um, and again, it's simultaneous, so there's no benefit uh, in combat to the British being disordered. And uh, they get a result of um, one. So that turns into a um, single uh, disorder result which takes the British unit up to three disorder. Now, because the British unit is disordered, um, it's not been destroyed, it can hold the ground, thus pushing the Germans back. Okay, and as at the end of combat, no units can be within one inch of each other. Um, sorry, that's assault. So at the end of an assault, no units can, can be within one inch of each other. So I'm just going to move this slightly over here um, in order to try and kind of maintain that. You can probably see that that's not the case, that they are closer than an inch, but um, that's just, just uh, a kind of a uh, an aesthetics thing so all we're saying here is is that the uh, APC and that anti-tank gun are not within one inch of each other okay and that um, concludes the end of the first German turn uh, what happens now is we move into the second turn of the game and the movement and activation system uh, used uh, within the game is now applied. So the way this works is each unit on the table, uh, sorry, each formation on the table is allocated a dice. In this case, we have one dice for the Germans and um, there are, there's a British formation on this side of the bridge and a British formation on the other side. So the British get two dice into the bag and the Germans have a single dice in the bag. And what happens now is um, one of those dice is randomly pulled from the bag and that and then the player that owns that dice then gets to allocate it to one of its units. In this case 
um, that uh, dice has been allocated um, that's come out is British. <coughs> I am going to uh, allocate that dice to the formation on this side of the bridge. Now, in order to get my troops to do what I want, uh, I can't just assume that's going to happen. I have to make a activation roll. And depending on how well that roll goes, I'll either have very limited capabilities, just being able to move or just being able to fire at short range, I'll be able to do one action of my choice uh, for each unit on the table, or if I get a really good result, I'll get to take two actions. Uh, and that's what happened in the previous turn with the Germans. They got a double activation. Now I'm just going to roll and see what happens. Okay, I got a four um, right in the middle, and therefore it's a single activation for that particular formation. So, what I'm going to do now, I think the most important thing is I'm very concerned about this infantry platoon here. It's not in great shape, taken an awful lot of um, uh, fire, and it's got three disorders. If it ends up in an assault again, uh, it's very likely that nasty things will happen to them. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rally. Um, that, that unit and one of the features of um, the rally order um, within this system in order to encourage players to um, put units in support and in, in depth is you can swap uh, a unit in the front line for a unit uh, in the rear line as long as both of them are within half a move of each other. So in this case I'm just going to move this unit forward, move that unit back, and put my um, disorder there. And I have the opportunity to attempt to remove some of that disorder. So I'm now going to roll the dice, and if I get a good result, I will remove a single point of disorder. Alas, I got a poor result, and so all of the disorder uh, stays there. But the important thing here is um, that I've managed to take a degraded unit out of the front line. Okay, uh, I'm now going to uh, conduct fire with the rest of my formation. So the anti-tank gun, we will have firing at one of those German vehicles. I think that's sensible. Uh, again, very straightforward, modified um, four or higher. Um, and I'm at plus one because of the range. Uh, I get a one, so no hit there. Um, I think my infantry here will fire at uh, the German infantry uh, right in front of them, so I think I'll take the one with the two disorder. Uh, so uh, again, require a modifier of four, plus one because of short range. And there we are, I've hit, I've got a, um, I've got a four, um, and now I roll to kill. Uh, unfortunately, I get a one, um, but again, what that does is it causes an additional disorder. So that two disorder now becomes three disorder. And that German unit is going to be incredibly ineffective if it ends up in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. And then finally, I'm going to fire this unit. Now, they swapped during the rally with this unit here, so they count as having moved. So I am at close range, but I get a penalty because I've moved, so essentially I'm rolling uh, an unmodified dice requiring a four, five, or a six. I get a four, so that's a hit. And unfortunately, I get a three, which isn't enough to kill them, but it is enough to put another disorder on them. So this unit here now has four disorder. Uh, I've just got these uh, little counters. I uh, got them from uh, off the internet through Peter Cole. Uh, there's a number of different people uh, that kind of produce them, and we just use it to kind of um, visually be able to see 
what's going. You can use pennies, rings, um, coloured pipe cleaners, anything you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, so that German unit there is in um, terrible trouble, really. But having said that, uh, I've now finished uh, all of the activity for my five um, units. Well, for one was killed in the previous turn. Um, and so we now go back to uh, the dice bag. And we draw out the next dice. And the next dice is German. So again, I have to roll to activate, uh, and again, dependent on the result of that, I'll get to take one or two or uh, a kind of partial action. Uh, I get a uh, excellent result. I'm able to move the Germans twice. So again, uh, the German position, it's quite clear. Um, they need to charge forward. Um, they're going to carry on going for it. So I'm going to uh, <coughs> I'm going to initiate some firing first. Um, even though you've got a, the Germans have got a double uh, action, they're not able uh, to shoot twice. Um, the only way you can shoot twice in a turn is if you are in ambush and then subsequently um, um, activate and, and then choose to shoot. However, what I can do is open fire and then initiate an assault. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to... Um, let me see. I think I'm going to rally... Um, my front infantry unit here um, and because uh, of my movement I can't swap uh, position or I can swap position with this vehicle here so I think what I'm going to do is I will attempt to rally I'll fall back through and I'll bring the um, vehicle forward Okay, um, so now I'm going to, sorry, I will attempt to remove one of the disorder on my infantry unit. Uh, unfortunately, I get a poor result. I don't get to remove um, one of the disorder. Um, I will now uh, undertake some fire. So the APC against the anti-tank gun, uh, close range, but the anti-tank gun is considered dug in, so they cancel each other out. So I need a four, five, or a six. Four is a hit. Uh, and again, uh, attempting to kill, uh, require a straight six to kill, and I get a six. So unfortunately, the British anti-tank gun is removed. Bit of a disaster for the British there. Um, on the other side, um, we will have, uh, I think we will take the um, vehicle on the road, is going to fire at the other uh, anti-tank gun. It uh, gets a three, which is not sufficient. Uh, it's close range, but the British are considered um, um, dug in or uh, in cover within the built-up area. And we'll fire here at this unit. However, uh, because of the fact that uh, I used this particular vehicle when I attempted to rally, uh, it's counting as having moved. So when it fires, it will fire at minus one. So minus one because the British are dug in, plus one for short range, minus one because it's moved, means I require a five or more in order to hit them. And I get a one, so no effect whatsoever. <clears throat> and then finally, at the rear, uh, I am going to fire 
uh, my Hannah Mag at uh, the British Infantry on that side of the bridge. Again, close range, m m uh, negated by cover. And I get a four, is a hit. And, ah, oh, I get another six. So another British unit has been eliminated. Okay. Right, so that's um, essentially, I'm going to attempt to rally this infantry here, but I'm not going to swap it with anything. Uh, I do get a good rally result, and as a result, the single disorder is removed. So even though the Germans were in quite a lot of disarray, um, the first part of their subsequent move has enabled them to recover uh, somewhat and now we're going to undertake the second part of uh, the German move and uh, we'll uh, attack, uh, assault. So I'm going to bring this infantry up here to assault there along with uh, that vehicle there. Um, I'm going to bring this vehicle over to assault over here and I think we will bring this vehicle up to assault here and we're going to bring this up just in support. Okay. So, as far as uh, the assaults are now concerned, we have one assault here involving these two uh, German units, we have one assault here involving these two units, and we have uh, a third assault here involving that. So again, as the Germans, uh, as the activating player, I get to choose the order, so I'm going to choose uh, to begin my assault here. Uh, that's where I've got the greatest advantage. So, um, because the British are disordered, we roll simultaneously. Um, the British troops have three disorder, um, but they have um, they have a, a bonus plus two because they're veteran, and another plus one because they are dug in. So essentially, the British are rolling a straight dice roll, and the British get an unmodified six. Um, so that will destroy the Germans, but because the Germans go simultaneously, uh, they also get to roll. Uh, they're at plus two because they're veteran, but minus one because they're infantry, uh, sorry, they're a vehicle attacking infantry in cover. And so they get a three, which becomes a four. So the British take on two more disorder, which takes them to five and removes them but the Germans were destroyed in the process. Okay, uh, we'll now move to this point of combat here. So the British are not disordered, and so essentially go first. They are at plus three, plus two because they're veteran, plus one because they're defending cover. And they got a result roll of two, uh, so that makes a five, and essentially they've caused two disorder to the Germans. Uh, the Germans now get to apply their, their um, uh, return their assault. However, because um, the British were undisordered, their, the result of, of the British uh, assault action is applied to the Germans before they can fight back. So we have a German vehicle that is at uh, plus two because it's veteran, but minus two because of the disorder. So again, uh, it's on a straight dice, except that it is attacking infantry in cover, so it's at minus one. So the best result the Germans can get is if they roll six, is a five. And they get a six. However, that becomes a five. The British are not killed, uh, and they just take to disorder, and once more, the Germans are pushed back uh, because they did not take the ground. And then finally, we have 
another assault here. Um, and so the British, not being disordered, go first. Um, British infantry veterans defending in cover is at plus three. And they get a four, so that's a seven. Uh, and so the British will choose to eliminate the infantry. The German armoured vehicle moves up and now initiates uh, its assault back. Um, the infantry, because it was destroyed before it got to act, does not get to take part in the battle. Um, so the Germans are at plus two because they're veteran, but minus one uh, because they're attacking uh, infantry in cover. Um, so they're only at uh, plus one. However, they rolled a five, so it eliminates the British infantry. And the Germans are now able to move up and take that position. <clears throat> okay, that concludes um, the Germans' second action. So we draw another dice out of the bag. Well, there's only one dice left, so it's got to be uh, the British. The British need to roll to activate, and really, in order to kind of hold the road, um, the British really need a good activation result. And they do, they get it. The British get to act twice. Now, the unfortunately, that particular unit only has two of its stands left, but what it can now do is <coughs> move up and it's going to enter into combat here with both of its units. <coughs> now the Germans are disordered, so they have to act simultaneously with the British. Uh, the British are no longer in cover because they're coming out to attack, uh, so the Germans are at plus two because they're veterans, um, but they're at minus two because of the two disorders, so it's a straight dice roll. Uh, the Germans get a five, and so uh, we'll apply um, some disorder to the British, and I think actually the German player will, will apply it, both disorder, to the other unit. But because it's simultaneous, uh, that does not affect the British uh, attacks. So we have one uh, British unit attacking here, plus two because it's veteran, but minus two. Um, because of the disorder, so it's a straight dice roll, and it gets a four, so that is two disorder course to the Germans. And this unit here, although disordered now, wasn't at the start of the combat, uh, is at plus two, um, and they get a terrible result, they get a one. However, that added two becomes three, and we essentially cause three more disorder to this German unit. And so it is destroyed. The British get to move up into position. And that concludes the first action for that unit. However, they have a second action. Now, I could move them over to assault um, this vehicle over here, but I think it's much more sensible to uh, just move them further back and to hold the road and force the Germans to come back and attack. And that essentially is a very quick run through of the rules. Um, I'm not proposing to take it any further. Um, I think you've had a reasonable uh, view of uh, the combat. I've talked a little bit about the activation mechanism. Um, there are lots more nuances and variations that are available within the rules, but um, hopefully that's a reasonable uh, idea of how David Vosilevsky's All Hell Let Loose rules work. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and um, hopefully I'll be posting another one shortly.